A local business and church are receiving death threats. Church was vandalized in Chesterland. All in the midst of the church getting ready to host a drag queen story hour. We're gonna come in. We're gonna have a table set up for metal detector. We're gonna have guards at the doors. This is what it takes to put on a drag event at a church these days. Anyone with children, they're gonna be taken up to the front. Leaders of the Chesterland Community Church are doing a security run before the weekend when they're hosting a pair of drag themed events, an adults only brunch at a restaurant downtown and a children's book reading here at the church. I think originally we wanted to put the kids up there and have people sit in the left. Is this the main hub right here? Yeah. My biggest concern is the kids being at this world by a window. Because even though this window's blocked, just that there's access to the main rooms. Are you talking about someone I'm taking a shot from I'm up here? I'm concerned about somebody shooting from the metal barriers back right. there. Since the events went public, the church has been bombarded by hate and threats. Last week, a white supremacist admitted to throwing a Molotov cocktail at the building, and the Proud Boys vowed to protest their drag events. The church had to spend more than $20,000 on additional security. This is about getting us to cancel this event. These are adults who are coming to the drag brunches, and it's parents and children coming to the story hour. All these threats, um, all this money for security, all this fear, I mean, why bother? Uh, the simple answer is because we have a right to. These events become important because uh, they are representative of queer culture. Queer culture has been under attack by the far right for the past year, and it's not just drag. Protests and political violence targeting the LGBTQ community more than tripled, according to one watchdog. And last month, extremists gathered outside a drag event in Wadsworth, just an hour away, where they shouted Nazi slogans and clashed with protesters. How does it feel to be the one that's being targeted? Like, it's, it's come here now. A little scary, number one, not gonna lie. White supremacists, self-professed Nazis, death threats on my door. So I'm used to, to some extent, um, being threatened personally. That bothers me less than my congregation being threatened. They have to be stopped. Someone has to put their foot down and say, we're not gonna let you bully us anymore. What makes you think that God is gonna love you in your sin? The next morning, the mood outside the drag brunch was tense. Jesus Christ died for our sins. If you abide in him, he will abide in you. Hair, shoes, all the fun. Inside, Veranda Lanai is getting ready to participate in both of today's events. All right, I gotta put my lashes on. How are you feeling? Uh, a little nervous, but good. The place that we're at now, you know, where you've got to deal with these kind of threats or this fear, I mean, is this the new normal for you to do your job? God, I hope not. I've never had this kind of protesting and anger towards an art form before. I mean, I've happily done my job for 15 years, so why now? You know, drag performers are meant to be a pillar of our community. And if we can't stand up for those who don't have a voice, then what are we doing? Are you scared? Just a little bit. You, you never know what's gonna come at you. I don't know what's going on outside, and that's the scary part. Who's really out there gunning for me, coming for me? If a man lies with a man, he has committed an abomination in the eyes of a holy God. I'm going to be bringing out Cleveland's tallest drag queen. <laughs> The protesters outside the restaurant made a lot of noise, but they didn't stay long. And when it started to rain, most of them went home. Back at the church, 
the children's book reading also went off smoothly, just with a lot of extra security. And about 10 minutes before the story hour began, the local Proud Boys chapter claimed that their threat of protest had all been an April Fool's joke. Hi, everybody. Hi. Ooh, are you ready for a good story? It's called The Good Egg. I'll be good with my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. All right, everyone, I want you to reach for the sky. Yes, yes, yes. Now shake, shake it all out. Shake, 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 shake. We can't thank you enough for your wonderful support. The Proud Boys have said now that this whole thing, everything, it was just an April Fool's joke. Do you feel like, you know, you had to spend all this money on security, that there's some world in which they can say, oh, look, like, we won, we tricked them, we got them. I don't care. I'm, I'm sick of talking about the Proud Boys. I'm sick of worrying about the Proud Boys. At the end of the day, people had fun, people were safe, and that's what we care about. Will you be holding more of these events? Absolutely. Once your church is attempted to be burned down with a Molotov cocktail, you have entered a new era, and we have. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.